Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shawnee Constant. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Bean. Keep motherfucker. Keep motherfucker. We are basking in the glory. In the glory. Of the opulent Wrestle Palace. Chandelier. Wrestle Palace. The scariest of all. Murder Cloud. It's like we said uh, previously on the show. Meteora. He's fat. He got a fat ass. <laughs> Like he's coming, Jakey! Look, I don't make him move. Monkeys fight prison style, dude. And this is the one for show! So I was a mailman for a long time, you know? Right. And, um, man, one day this lady moved into a house, and she brought her wiener dog with her. Okay. And let me tell you, wiener dogs are angry. Like, not only are they shaped like torpedoes and move like torpedoes, uh, they're vicious like torpedoes. Well, most small dogs are. Like, isn't that? It's kind of weird that how that works. Like yes. The larger ones seem more calm, but the smaller I ones... I was bit five times as a letter carrier, and there was all by small dogs. But right now I'm talking about this wiener dog, Right. Right. One advantage of a animal shaped and acting like a torpedo is that you can sidestep it. Yeah, for sure. And it's got to like double back around, but they're tenacious, these little bastards. So this guy would torment me every day. I'd go by his house and he'd just bark, 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 bark. Well, one day he goes straight into the window. Whoa. Like, like nose first, like he had been launched from a, a damn submarine. And he didn't come through the window because he's a wiener dog. <laughs> right. He but he did leave a spl- He left a splotch. And a crack. Whoa. Like, he cracked the... He, he gave it his best shot. Like I have to hand it to him for that. busted up his nose or something? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Holy he split moly. his nose. <laughs> and I don't think he cut it on the glass. I think it was pure blunt force trauma. That dog was blatant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he busted open the hard way. Yeah. And this is our first meeting. So I'm like, crap, how are we going to make a program out of this? <laughs> because in the first match, he's already drawing blood. And getting the sympathy of the crowd. Well, he wasn't getting sympathy for me. So, of course, the rest of the summer, I would just fuck with him. And I was trying to get him to come back into the into glass. The window. Like, right. Harder this time, motherfucker, because <laughs> now I know if you get out, you're going to be dazed and bloody, and you'll be <laughs> easy pickings for a man like me. Right, right. But also... <laughs> I like the idea that if he wasn't dazed, he would not be easy pickings. Right, right. Well, no, because they move like a torpedo. The fight got... was on. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a little bit of a shit heel. What can I say? But... Uh, yeah, so near the end of the summer, I finally the owner comes and pulls in, and this is a sort of typical suburban yard. So there's a there's a gate along the side, and she closes the gate. She lets the dog out as I'm walking up. I see all this transpiring. I'm like, cool, the owner. This dog's not going to uh, attack gonna... me now. This isn't where our program ends. Oh, right, so he's I... not going to act up in front of the boss. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I stick my arm out horizontal with the ground and walk towards her like boop 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 and she reaches her arm out and I get over the fence and this damn wiener dog like the fucking six million dollar wiener comes up whoosh like a four foot leap. <laughs> was, yeah, however high my, my outstretched arm is. And he bit my forearm, this motherfucker. He went into business for himself, <laughs> right in front of the promoter, right in front of the booker, completely overturned the call ending, and uh, I had to concede the title to him. We never... Uh, we you, never, never you never got your rematch? We never matched up again. That's unfortunate. Who would have thought a wiener dog would be a cruiserweight? Right. I mean, they're small, but you don't picture them flying. No, no. Unless they, they're launched, as you said earlier, out of a torpedo. They've got the, the, the little bit of the pudgy thing going on, which is not, you know, impossible on the cruiserweights. It's true. Um, I think that's all. I don't think you were the heel in this particular program. No. I think that the, the, the wiener dog was absolutely the heel. Yes. Animals are heel. Uh, wiener dogs are heel. Yeah. Um, I would. I, I, I think you're right. I think probably all animals are heel. Like I'm a cat person, but cats are cats are, cats are absolutely heel. They're like stone cold assassins. So yes, I would say they are very heel. <laughs> Even the sweetest cat is just like waiting for the opportunity to like just turn on you. Yeah, and I think even like the nicest dog is probably only a couple of bowls of food away from completely uh, swerving. I don't know. I think I think your dog's kind of isn't very heel. 
No, he's pretty hard to get to. <laughs> he's definitely a face. Like, he's always happy to see me. He's just kind of lumbers around. Oh, no, no, fair, no, no. Fair, fair. So he's probably, he's, he's probably face. Snakes. I think snakes are healed. Snakes are healed. That goes all the way back to the Bible, though. You know, yeah. that's Genesis. Is Great. That's healed. the first heel turn. Heel as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Daffy Duck. Oh, Daffy Duck are you kidding me? Heel. <laughs> the Miz has patterned his career off of Daffy <laughs> Duck. <laughs> Daffy Duck is obviously the heel. Bugs is a fucking heel, man. He can be. Bugs yeah, he's Bunny's a trainer. A heel. He goes back and forth. <laughs> he's just yeah, he's just a heel that you like if he's some somebody's worse than he is, then it's kind of fun to watch him directed at them. You know, Bugs Bunny's a lot like Loki, right? Like he just does whatever's yeah. gonna get him through. But you know when the when the rubber meets the road, it's all about bugs. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you are on your fucking own. Yes. With that with that shit. What about like uh while we're talking about cartoon characters, you got like the 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 classic um the classic feud of the Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote. Yes. Like who's the fucking heel in that, man? Cause oh, I see what you're saying. There's you're, a lot of instigation going on. You're inclined to think it's Wiley e. Coyote. He's booked as the heel for sure, but I'm not sure who that uh, the Roadrunner ever really gets over. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, if you, if, if anyone's uh, listening to this, go ahead and hit us up on the <laughs> One Fall Show Facebook page and tell us who is the heel in your world between the Coyote and the Roadrunner. I think that's an excellent question. For sure, for sure. What about zoo animals? Zoo animals? Because I, I think there's probably a lot of zoo animals. They're like, they, they signed a, a couple-year contract, and they're not being booked properly, and they're, they're just like, they're, they're, they're not necessarily uh, booked as heel, but they're just sick of being there. Yeah, well, if they had been a little more face when they were in the free world like the rest of us, maybe they wouldn't be in the predicament that they're in. Hey, zoo animals, I got two words for you. The zoo sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shawnee, it's uh, it's great to be back after the, the holidays, and yes. uh, unfortunately the holidays brought us the passing of WWE Hall of Famer and legend Mean Gene Okerlund, and that's, that's uh, it, it's, it's rough to, yeah, for sure, it's, it's rough to, uh, to start 2019 with uh, the passing of Mean Gene, but he was, you know, he, he was getting up there in the years. Sure, for he sure. His, his um, Hall of Fame speech was already 12 years ago, and he, yeah. he looked... He looked like he was sort of ready then. I, mean, I, I thought when he gave that speech about being buried upside down, so his, <laughs> so his critics could. Who were his critics? I don't know a single one. Have I, you ever I, met yeah. a mean Gene critic? No, that's the thing that uh, you know. In doing a, just you know a tiny bit of research, listening to um, a couple other podcasts talking about Mean Gene, and then you know going on the internet and you know just watching old Mean Gene uh, interviews, stand up interviews, and stuff like that. Everyone seemed to really love Mean Gene. Yeah. There was very few people he didn't enjoy working with, but you know he absolutely. Uh, iconic to uh, Hulk Hogan's career. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my favorite are the Randy Savage stand-up interviews he did, where <laughs> Savage would always have. It's like they would just hand Savage a prop off camera yeah. and be like, "You got three minutes, use the prop." Did he do the Dairy Creamer one? The cream, the cream <laughs> of the crop. Ooh yeah! And he's just palming him like a magician. <laughs> yeah. At one point, he puts it on top of his head and balances yes. it for a second. <laughs> I can't remember uh, which one because there's like three of them. There's the the like Dairy Creamer one, right? Raging magician, right? There's the Dairy Creamer one. There's one he's talking about Tito Santana, and he comes in with like his cape, oh, like he's hold, hiding something. And after a, about thirty seconds, he pulls the cape back, and he's got like a little dustbin, <laughs> and he's like, Tito, Tito Santana is just trash. And that's oh. where he's going out in the trash. Oh yeah, I re- I, re- I remember enjoying that uh, whole program when I was a kid a lot. For whatever reason, that that Tito Santana that, and Randy Savage. Two months, everyone was a Tito Santana fan. Wow. Wow. Only a few of us remember it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, Tito, I believe... Uh, no, Randy, he pulled a... Uh, one of their matches may have been the closer. He pulled a... Um I remember he because he wore those little trunks, but yeah, he, he the, pulled a foreign object out. Out of his trunks, like, right? Where the hell was he hiding that damn thing? <laughs> well, he's wearing spand- he's, wearing, he's wearing briefs. <laughs> it's right next to his unit. Yeah. Right next, right next to his <laughs> macho madness. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But one of those, uh, in watching him, I've forgotten, one of those, uh, Randy Savage clearly um, says all he, like, hits a, 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 a wall in his brain mm-hmm. and just stops and looks at Gene for a second like he's waiting for Gene to pick it up and then just goes, ooh, freak out, yeah, <laughs> and just walks <laughs> off camera and leaves Gene to, like, the macho man, Randy Savage. My favorite one is he, he uh, 
he asks him where Elizabeth is. He's like, you don't need to know where Elizabeth is. And then he's what? He's like, Elizabeth, you go left and I'll go right. And he walks out and Gene's like, can I ask one more question? And off camera, uh, you hear Rainy go, no more questions. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's where his strength was, right? His reactions. like Absolutely. Like he was fun in terms of he would wear silly costumes and he would set himself as the everyman in whatever environment yeah. the carnies wanted to put him in. Like if it was going to be a food fight, he might be wearing a chef's hat or some yep. like crazy nonsense. But really where his strength lied was not in the setup of the comedy bits, but as a reactionary guy. Right. Where he watches these things go on and then is either able to validate or diffuse or <laughs> work yeah, with, I- with the creator of the... And that's what we're missing right now, right? We're both the... We're, we're both the interviewer and the interviewee are scripted. For sure. Absolutely. You you don't have the, uh, the improvisation. But at the same time, Mean Gene... Um, you know, he did some commentary work as well, but when we all think of Mean Gene Oakland, it's doing the stand-up interviews. And while you see a lot of people do those, like, say, Renee Young or something like that, that's not, like, the end game for anybody anymore. Right. That's not like, I'm going to make this my thing anymore. It's like, no, this is a step on the way to something greater, you know, whether it's being behind the commentary table or, you know, eventually becoming a wrestler of some sort. Yeah, and we talk about the fact that, you know, just a few weeks ago, Vince McMahon came out and said one of the things that he's going to do to make Raw great again, everyone put on your red hats, Oof. is... Uh, <laughs> It's raw. They wear red. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, um, is give uh, the, the the talent some a little more leeway. I wonder if we, you know, we always think of Vince McMahon as just this tyrant and he just wants to micromanage everything. But I wonder right. if the lack of a mean gene type makes it uncomfortable for him because he doesn't know that he has the safety net for a bombing interview. Right. He doesn't. Whereas mean gene, you could have Macho Man come out and go, "Ooh, freak out!" Right. And you knew mean gene was going to be able to hold the bit together. Right. And we don't necessarily have that now because everyone has been. In this non-improv world, yeah, I mean, we we do have. Uh, thank goodness for the last couple of years, we do have um, Corey Graves, who's yes. bringing back the kind of uh, um, the the heel commentator that mm. you got with like a Bobby Heenan or a Jesse Ventura. I th- I think he's a modern day Jesse Ventura myself. Yeah, he likes to. He I think he really likes to show that kayfabe is still possible, and that's right. why I think he's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, people get bent out of shape because eventually he makes a swerve in a territory that is uncomfortable for them. Sure. That's what a heel does, right? Yeah, right. The idea of if you, I was watching an interview with Bill Burr recently, and he was saying that one of the, his issues as a comedian with the reactionary culture is that everyone understands it's a joke when you're laughing at everyone else, but as soon as it hits too close to home, you're like, that was a manifesto. And he's ah. like, no, it's all comedy. It was comedy yeah. when I was making fun of him. It's comedy when I'm making fun of you. And uh, Graves, I think, is really good about that. Now we'll see. Maybe I, I could be wrong. We could find out that he's a, another rotten carny in a rotten carny. Well, business, yeah. But <laughs> I know my optimistic. I know my girlfriend says it makes her super uncomfortable whenever uh, he starts drooling over uh, on Raw. It's Alexa, and on SmackDown, it's. Um, Oh, I can't think of Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It it, it is very weird. I'm glad he stopped for a while. It was kind of funny that he started again, but I think he should stop again. (laughs) (laughs) See, but for some reason, having lived through Jerry the King Lawler, like this doesn't, this seems like such a smaller offense. That, well, I, that it's like it's a wrestling trope and I embrace it and it's fine with me because it doesn't feel as creepy as Uncle Jerry. Well, it's interesting, though, that this is the first time in a while that they're not only they constantly are hyping the women's movement in wrestling, but they are leaning back into an old kind of they're using Mandy Rose in a sort of diva kind. Yeah. of Yeah. And it seems to be generally working. I'm not huge into it, but. Eh, you know, whatever. It's, it may be simply a matter of the fact that I've seen it a million times more than being personally offended or anything. It's the kind of thing that I think if you're doing it with, you know, if 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 not every women's storyline that connects with the men is a so and so cheating on their husband or so and so cheating right. on their wife. Kind and of that's thing. where the king went we wrong, saw, right? Was every single every, he, he every, devalued every match by yeah. constantly making them every single his every yeah every single woman that would come out immediately was like puppies puppies and right. you know like that's funny once yeah but you know it, it they, is reductive and kind of gross on the, uh, right. when it's hammered over and over. Now, do you think Mean Gene was able to? Was he, did he just stay squeaky clean throughout a whole lot of ugly storylines? Or did he help make it easier for us to understand that we were in a world of fantasy? Hmm. 
I feel like, well, Gene was never, you know, like even Michael Cole went through a phase of being the heel commentator mm-hmm. or something like that. And I don't feel like Mean Gene ever went through a phase of like, well, let's see if we can get the people to just fucking boo Mean Gene. Right, right. No, I don't think so. But at the at the same time, I, th- I think you're onto something. I think he definitely kind of, uh, without literally winking at the camera always reminded you that's like hey it's it's wrestling it's this exploded weird version of reality Mm -hmm. yeah no he his presence alone was the wink i think to a certain extent (laughs) for sure they don't have that now for sure cole certainly does not feel mean jeans shoes i don't know that anybody does and it's it's really also kind of funny to think about Mean Gene in that, like I was saying before, even though he'd done commentary, I always picture Mean Gene as the stand-up guy by himself. Like he, uh, the last time I think we we got to see him in in any capacity on a commentary table was WrestleMania 17. They did like a gimmick battle royal where they brought all the old guys back, like Brother Love and Sergeant Slaughter okay. and everything, and they put Gene and uh, Heenan mm. behind the commentary table for the match. The best. Uh, it was good, and uh, but at the same time, I really would have preferred, even though he was long dead at the time, if you could have got Gorilla Monsoon, because I always pictured Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan were the, you know, right, back yeah. in the day. It was always Vince, and, uh, Vince McMahon and, and Jesse Ventura, and it was always Gorilla and Bobby Bobby Heenan. Those were your two commentary teams. Yeah, in terms of just sitting alongside the ring wrestling. and yeah, breaking down the matches, it was those two. Now, I, I have to differ from you. You said that you wish that even though he's dead, they would have brought back Gorilla Monsoon. No, I, <laughs> you I like would, zombie Gorilla. I would not. No, I would prefer you let him oh, rest well, in peace. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. That's 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 probably a, a good uh, thing. And and hopefully we can we can hope that the same thing is said for Gene. Speaking of Gene, you you, uh, you catch Hogan on Raw. Yeah, you know, I thought that it was fine. It was appropriate to have him come out. Yeah. Uh, he didn't add nor detract from the experience, uh, which I guess on a show that you're constantly looking at as being bad is kind of a plus, but I was completely disinterested. He's so decrepit. <laughs> I bet it's it's the second of two events I've had over the last couple of weeks that uh, have hammered home a specific point to me that uh, I'll, I'll take the long way around, but I'll get to for you. So a couple of weeks ago, the New Year's... Eve episode of Monday Night Raw was filmed here in Detroit, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't on New Year's Eve. Right. It was on a Friday so that nobody had to work on New Year's Eve kind of thing. Which I I can appreciate. I was was surprised. I thought they just... They bulldog through those. Yeah, holidays. right. For They're the just like, sake, I think it's better. Right. Hey, you don't have any place to be on, you know, uh, December 31st, right? You want to come to an arena and watch some wrestling? Um, but uh, the main event that night uh, it was Ronda Rousey in a tag team match or something like that. And uh, while uh, I, we, we've said on the show multiple times that Ronda, <laughs> her, her in-ring work, every, every time you see her in-ring work is better than it was the last time. Uh, but as a person, I, I personally am not a fan of Ronda Rousey. Uh, the, the fucking arena pops for her. They love her. A, an yep. arena full of people, um, you know, you're... You, uh, all of us behind our keyboards on the internet uh, saying how much Ronda Rousey is a bad person. Um, we're in the minority when it comes to going to the arena. And it sure shows where Vince understands, like, the my least favorite people are the spectacles. Right. And But he gets it, man. Like, you give her a ton of money and the people come and they're going to cheer loud. Uh, Randy Orton, same thing. I don't get yeah. it. But, you know, bring Randy Orton anywhere. Drop any Randy Orton in the middle of the ring in anywhere in the world and he is over. Yeah. And, what do I know, man? <laughs> and it's the same thing, you know, leading into when, when all of us heard that, oh, Hulk Hogan's going to, you know, memorialize me and Gene on Monday Night Raw. We're like, oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, Hulk Hogan. And I'll tell you, right from the mu- right from the minute Real American hits, there's people in the crowd with Hulkamania t-shirts, and that the crowd pops for them. Yeah. So, like, you know. It's, Why is it them not to open the show with it, though, I think? Get, yeah. Get, get the crowd a little, get, get them a little tired, get them a little. I, they opened the show fairly well, and the crowd was into it, so that if you do have people people who show up and are literally just locked and loaded to boo the first thing you at least right. knock them off track yeah exactly uh, and i'm not saying that that's the uh societally the thing that needed to be done but i'm saying from a wwe standpoint it was a, it was a shrewd move and it seemed to work out well and i don't know that booing the guy is going to do anybody any good frankly uh i especially when he's out there to you know like if if 
Hogan goes out there and goes into business for himself. Right. That then, would be disastrous. Sure, sorry. If it seems that they're going to make him a big part of the program, that would be disastrous. I, I would uh, almost for sure stop watching on principle, not only because I find him to be uh, distasteful, because I think that would be boring. Like if you made sure. the, uh, Hulk Hogan the general manager or something, I'm not I'm not about just that. just not interested He's, in that. Yeah, no, no, move him He along. certainly can't. Uh, he doesn't have a smile that Kurt Angle does. No. That lends you to believe he has no idea what he's doing there. And you don't want to see, for sure. Sure, don't want to see him in action at this point. I certainly, like, yeah. It's like half shut down like a clam. Yeah, um, well, it's it's uh, friggin' uh, what was it the the Australian house show all over again? Like I'd rather watch any of those four guys in their prime mm-hmm. than watch them now. Sure, yeah, yeah. Rusev and Nakamura is kind of fun. Now it could be the swan song for Nakamura and the sort of blast off for whatever they're going to allow Rusev. I think coming out of this talk of changing things and letting you see who you want. I think we're going to see a little bit of a North American run or a U.S. title run out of Rusev after this, but is this the call? The, are we calling it quits? Is, is Nakamura running out the contract here and moving along? I don't know. I And it's a real, um, it's a, not to divert too hard, but it's a, there's a lot of people uh, right now in wrestling, not just in the WWE, that we look at and we're like, hmm, what does the future hold? Sure, for so, for a lot of these people. Obviously, with the um, we got the the big AEW announcement, and that's very interesting. It seems to have come in place. You know, we always have the hype of who's coming from New Japan and who's going to show up at the Royal Rumble. Right, you get the the end of Wrestle Kingdom, and you look at you know who lost matches, who is you know who's dropping titles, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I gotta say, I do not remember. An event where every title changed hands, right? But uh, so that alone makes uh, this year's Wrestle Kingdom unique. Yes, interesting, great. I don't know. I have not watched it yet, and my trepidation is that other. I normally enjoy that like all six hours of that damn thing. Uh-huh. But we don't have a marquee match from Minoru Suzuki. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have a marquee match from the villain Marty Squirrel right uh, I I will for sure uh, in the next week or two uh, perhaps as early as today watch uh, I, I need to see the Osprey versus Abushi Abushi match yes. yeah I saw I saw the the lad the finish of that match and it's it was such a it's a brutal hit okay excellent it's just a, a brutal hit I think uh, Freddie Rakang said something either in our group or in somebody else's group about uh, Kota Abushi just doesn't like thoughts <laughs> just has something against his brain <laughs> <laughs> and wants wants as many concussions as possible. It looks like could be, could but be. once again, you know, you look at um, uh, Kenny Omega mm-hmm. dropping the title, and and the you know he I don't think he's been officially uh, listed as part of All Elite Wrestling, but everyone expects that's where he's going to go. Sure, and you know, at, not, thanks to uh, thanks to AJ Styles three or four years ago, uh, you know, whoever drops a belt at Wrestle Kingdom, everybody's like, ooh, are they going to be at the Rumble? Which I think is setting yourself up for a little bit of disappointment. <laughs> well, there—I mean, it's not entirely out of the question. It's it, not. It's been said that they've like rolled up a ton of money to him, and that they're going to give him some creative control and a title run that's been on the dirt cheese. Does all that matter to him? Because right. it's still going to be you're wrestling, you know, three hundred twenty days a damn year, and you're not doing it with your best friends. Right. And even if you are doing it with your best friends, you're going to be forced into weird, stupid angles. Eh, I, I I don't know in my, in my own brain I love the idea of Kenny signing a you know like a three year contract or something like that with the WWE and um, making WWE money and then just signing half of it over to AEW mm-hmm. <laughs> like how fucking ballsy right, right. is that <laughs> yeah. because and and that's the thing I think of too is like uh, Kenny Omega has given us you know five and six star matches over in New Japan and has made a name. Largely outside of wrestling, outside of America. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what is what is three years working for the WWE on his career, and then taking that name recognition from even being booked abs- absolutely terribly in the WWE, and going like, "Hey, I'm going over here now." Sure. No, I mean, it's, he's he's uh, the way he has orchestrated his life. He's in a beautiful spot because he can. WWE can does not have to be at all about the money, right? Like, uh, yeah. it's if he wants to enter that fray, if he wants to, you know, a lot of people think, well, this is the this is the highest point in the industry. This is where you want to achieve. If that's his mentality, then that's right for the picking. But 
there were talks that um, they were offering three hundred thousand dollars to some of these, a couple of these free agents. Now, whether or not that's anywhere close to accurate, who knows? But it sure. sounds like AEW. They've got a billionaire in the Jacksonville Jaguars owner who's behind them. And he is fat stacked. So that's awesome. Whether or not, uh, you know, who knows how much he's going to devote to wrestling. We don't know. This could be a failed experiment. I think that it's going to almost for sure be the doom of Impact Wrestling. Oof. At least knock him off the damn TV. And yeah, I, well, they're already, I think, I think even starting this week, like they've moved channels and the channel isn't offered on every yeah. cable service. So they're going to have to uh, stream their shit on Twitch. Yeah. On like Friday afternoons or something like that, just to make sure that you know anyone can get a yeah. hold of their stuff. They're in an awful situation, and then uh, apparently the announcement of AEW and the leaving of the Bucks and everything has already had recognizable box office impact on Ring of Honor. Really? Yeah, because there was a talk that uh, AEW. You know, of course, at at the moment, New Japan. This is where it gets the most interesting. I think New Japan has a deal with Ring of Honor. Of course, they've been working that deal for a long time. Now, sure. AEW is trying to get in on that three person deal, but you've angered ROH and you've angered New Japan. Now it sounds like both of them at this point are taking an adversarial relationship with All Elite. That's all well and good for New Japan because they're. Bread and butter is in Japan. That's but right. Ring of Honor is basically saying, you know what? Screw you. We refuse to work for you. And at this point, I mean, it's like, in, what is going to save them from getting bowled over by AEW? They no longer have the star power. They no longer have the hype. It's a bunch of old guys in a in a boardroom who were just basically existing purely on the the brilliance of these really smart carny men and their performers that have now all left. I like, know I was while you were talking I was trying to think who is left at Ring of Honor to like hang that show on and not being, you know, a Dyed and Wool Ring of Honor fan. I can't think of anybody. Not, not nobody, unfortunately. Now, that's not to say that n nobody is going to be able to step up and demonstrate themselves to be um you know, show closing talent. Right. But the way the problem Ring of Honor, I believe, is going to run into is they have been letting the elite run the show and be their closers. Right. For two or three years now. And so all of that under talent, they've gotten to work with the elite and mix mix it up. And But I don't know that any of those. I, I, I Someone would have to really, it would have to be a stone cold kind of moment, I think, for any of these people. Well, and you, you get the, uh, you, I think we've heard the stories before, too, that somebody had said that uh, no, Vince McMahon will never let anybody get to the level of The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin because once a superstar, much like the elite, gets to uh, the level that they are, if they, if they leave... You, you're left with this giant void and mm -hmm. you can't and they have so much kind of power behind them uh, with with the audience that you can't stop them from doing whatever they damn well please. I have a feeling that Vince McMahon is privately very upset about the fact that um, that uh, Chris Jericho showed up at the All Elite press conference. You would imagine. Absolutely. Jericho and talks often on his podcast about how he, he he will contact even on the indies he's he, he has text chats with Vince McMahon I have a feeling that this one may have <laughs> may have put him on the no call list yeah maybe maybe we may not be seeing Chris Jericho at the Royal Rumble this year now how can that would be a moment if he did show up because then all the questions would be back on the table, right? Like all this, all the cynicism of being a wrestling fan and saying, well, we already know where everyone's going. There's nothing exciting. But if right. Jericho showed up, that would be like, oh, wait, anything is possible. Yeah, there, there is that for sure. And that's, I think that's a large part of what's missing. Um, you know, like over the holidays, it was the anniversary of uh, the, the Mick Foley title, title win on Monday Night Raw. So going back on the network and actually watching that particular show and, and how it, it, it really felt like anybody could show up at any minute, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. even even only half remembering who was on the roster at the time. It felt like, well, I mean, Stone Cold could show up at any minute and just give a guy a stunner or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I guess we we have that environment to a certain extent now, but we always we we're not excited enough about the the people involved, right? Like yeah. Bobby Lashley shows up, or again, it's uh, McIntyre shows up, so right? And it it's like, already well, feels dry, and I think it's just simply because they ignore there are certain faces and certain heels that enough of us it's the club man enough of us want to see the club get to be the club, yeah, in any fashion, however you want to do it. I think it would add a huge, it would bolster a lot of this low morale for those of us who are like the hardcore wrestling fans who really appreciate the indies. 
and I, I don't. It's shocking to me that they can't figure out how to work that angle. Instead of getting the club, we get Mustafa Ali, and there's no sh- shoot on Mustafa Ali. He's worked very hard. He puts on excellent work with Tranquilo. I think he probably oh, yeah. will be an asset to the company. However. We've spent the last two years saying 205 guys only face 205 guys because they're they're lesser than. So now don't try to convince me that he's a superstar. Like, wait a minute. Why was he over there? Oh, you're telling me all this time we were watching Brock Lesnar, but really all of the real powerhouses are in 205 live <laughs> to the cruiserweights? Like, they don't reestablish. That's where they need to clear the decks and reestablish everything. And, like, the like, hey, look, we're retconning everything. Whatever you think about all these people is no longer on the table we're starting over fresh and so we don't see someone come into the ring in the third hour of raw and go well he only comes into the ring to lose you know having right um, uh, having uh, what like kurt hawkins <laughs> yeah kurt hawkins um prince pretty oh tyler breeze tyler breeze yeah you know it's just <sighs> yeah we can tell us we're going to see new stuff and we're bringing up like the second rate people from fucking nxt i don't get it I tend to wonder if it's uh if if it's possibly a disconnect in that they are booking for a different audience than we expect them to be for sure. If yeah. you if you know what I'm if mm-hmm. if that makes sense like no, they they're, are. They're the Ronda Rouseys. We you know um not all of us smarks are into Ronda Rousey. Sure. Yeah. But more along the lines of like we we've uh you know been conditioned if you've watched wrestling for years and years and years you've been conditioned to like okay you get little chapters of your story every Monday night on TV, but then the big events happen on a Sunday night once a month mm-hmm. kind of thing. And it feels like they've changed the, um, I don't know what the right word for the it is, the, the business model yeah. of that stuff. And and I, I maybe, maybe the business model is literally trying to drive as many people to the network as possible. So, I mean, I, I don't think that the Monday and Tuesday night shows are sandbagging per se, but like... Look, if you want to have a um, real good time, we've got these one-hour shows over on the network on Wednesday nights. Yeah, who knows? It's all very interesting to to try to look through the haze that is the outward appearance of the thing. And, you know, that's always the case with any kind of company. It's particularly fun to me because they're carnies. You know? <laughs> sure. But... Um, who yeah, because you're always, you're always second guessing like how the cup game is working. Yes, yes, it's like I know I'm being grifted, but it, it, to what extent and what is it you're after? Right, right. like you're, here you're, I was protecting my wallet, and you didn't care about my wallet. You stole my watch, you <laughs> dirty dog. <laughs> All right, so give me a second here because I want to talk about the women's matches on both sides of the the fence this week. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so um, Sasha Banks and Nia Jax fight to see who's going to fight Ronda Rousey. At, uh, at the Royal Rumble on Monday night. And while, as internet marks, we all have very low opinions on the clumsiness or the uh, safeness of both Sasha Banks and Nia Jax, mm-hmm. there were like three spots that night that I felt like after the first one was like, oh, Nia almost killed Sasha Banks. And then the second time it happened, I'm like, are you fucking with me? <laughs> There's no way this is happening twice. And then by the third time, I was like, no, you're fucking with me. You know that as an internet mark, I expect that, wow, these two these two are entering the ring. If either of them makes it out without injury, it will be a miracle. <laughs> and I heard some, I don't even know, I think um, Manly Jack Manley on the Indies mentioned that he was excited because he had heard rumors that Sasha Banks might be going to AEW. Have you heard anything about that? No, not at all. I didn't dig any deeper. I don't know anything about it. It's... Uh, I wouldn't. I'm 100 percent certain this did not happen in 2018 or 2019. I am also about 90 percent sure that it did happen in like the 80s back in professional wrestling, where yeah. you, you have you hear that Sasha might be jumping ship, so you have Nia go out there and give her the business, <laughs> <laughs> try and hurt her. Yep. Uh, well, Teach her a little carny lesson. Right. We are going to see Sasha versus uh, Ronda Rousey, which will be interesting because I think it's the first match Ronda Rousey has with somebody that doesn't like kind of outclass her, outpower her. I mean, Alexa kind of, uh, but, you know, whatever. But then no, you, there's definitely like this sort of, um, what is that, uh, the, the the Bruce Lee movie where he goes up the different levels and fights yeah. the mini boss each right, time? Right, like, exactly. I mean, that's how all wrestling is arranged, but we do get to sort of feel that with Ronda. We, yeah. They still haven't quite blown that entirely. I don't know if they've been completely sold it either, but they haven't blown it quite yet. I, so that's, that's a little bit fun. But uh, both shows, it was one of those weeks at least, where both shows were booked uh, similarly, mm-hmm. which is always weird. Like Monday Night Raw started with uh, Seth Rollins and... Um, 
and Bobby Lashley just brawling mm -hmm. backstage kind of thing, which I haven't seen in a minute. So, all right, cool. And then 24 hours later, um, SmackDown starts with Daniel Bryan out by the concession stand throwing pop in <laughs> fans' faces and that was stuff. a very strange open. Did right. People seem to really like it. I was not that over with it. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, How do you I've, feel about, in general, people are loving this heel, earth-first Daniel Bryan? I love that Daniel Bryan is uh, using you know $20 words and, like, We've got heels on either side that are trying. You know, Dean is calling himself like the conscience of, uh, mm -hmm. of Monday Night Raw or something like that. You've got heels who are essentially being the good guy, right? And we are supposed to hate them for it. Yeah. Although uh, Daniel Bryan is starting to look a little bit like Aqualong, if uh, anyone's familiar with Jethro Tull. I, I see that sitting on a park bench. Absolutely, absolutely. Who 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 does that make cross-eyed Mary in this? In this <laughs> I am not going there, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then on on SmackDown, your your main event was Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Carmella, and there was an obvious difference between because they put on a great match mm -hmm. between the three of them. Um, but there was an obvious difference between a great match where nobody looks like everybody looks like they're very snug mm -hmm. and beating each other up, and a match uh, where everybody looks like they could legitimately be trying to break each other. Right, sure. Yeah, Sheamus beats the crap out of people. He continues to <laughs> consistently do that, but he does not <laughs> drop people on their heads, and there's a right. huge difference there, in my opinion. Yeah, but it, it was, it's, it's one of those weird dichotomy things that if you stop and take a look around, you're like, this is so strange. Mm -hmm. It's so it's strange the disconnect we've talked about before. How like guys would do like Gargano and Ciampa doing some of their best work in NXT, and then you know God help us when they eventually decide that they want them on one of the main roster shows mm -hmm. because now all of that doesn't count anymore, and that's bullshit. And we've talked about that at length. Um, you know, I've been thinking about this NXT WWE thing, and when they pull up the the the. The pads outside of the ring. Yeah, you've gotten to see several times with uh, Champa and uh, Gargano. You can see that those ring pads are much thicker than the WWE ring pads. Do you think that you like? Okay, kayfabe is large. Kayfabe as we knew it is dead. Give them thick pads and let them do crazy moves. Yeah, it seems odd that they're still trying to like they're still trying to give you some air of danger by like you see we pull up these pads they're very very thin well we'll make them thick and let them do better, better <laughs> right. moves. I agree. Is there an element there that people are overlooking? Because I think that's one of the big you know people are younger in NXT, but when they pull up those pads, you see oh it's a lot more fun to do swantons off you know onto, that. onto the yeah onto the you floor. Know, like, how about surround the ring with a ball pit and let them go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can look forward to that in AEW. Yeah, maybe a ball so. pit match. A ball pit match. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Hell yes, it would. I love the ball pit match. Um, you but, put it in the ring in the middle, or you could put it outside the ring. You could do you could go full crazy. Yeah, you can. You can just take the balls, launch and them as, wiffle balls at each other yeah, as hard as objects. possible, and they they, they can't <laughs> do damage really. I want to see. I want to see a dude take a huge back bump by getting a wiffle ball in the in the dome. <laughs> yeah, just a wiffle ball in the face and just wah. How much fun would Chris Jericho uh, orchestrating? You know, being get, getting to to book a ball pit match. Yeah. Maybe. With the young bucks involved and flips and balls flying everywhere. <laughs> 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 Woo! Make wrestling. Don't make wrestling great again. Make wrestling fun again. Make wrestling fun again. Please, <laughs> please. Have you watched on the network the um, the Good Brothers doing their bocce show? I did. I, I, I had fun with it. Yeah. I, I like when they, first off, watching botches are fun. I mean, that goes through all the sports. You know, blooper reels have been popular oh, forever. Oh, sure. But I just like at the end when when one of them or the other or both of them are just laughing and they just can't stop laughing yep. because they're getting over on each other so much. That's to me that's living the dream right there. Yeah, for Doesn't sure. Doesn't matter what happened for the preceding fifteen minutes. He's like, "You crapped your pants." Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That was that was fantastic. Unfortunately, the fashion files on the network not as good. It was not. Uh, definitely need to work out some kinks on that one. It was yeah. nice to see Zongo back. Um, yeah, you know, in live and living color, he's looking good and looked ring ready. But it, what the time they took between the vignettes on SmackDown and the show, or whoever they added to make. Some, the the stew ain't right, man. Yeah, well, something, and that, something's wrong with the stew right now. On that, that goes back to what I was saying. You got guys that get called up for an NXT to either Raw or SmackDown and fall in the hole, and mm -hmm. that sucks. And but don't the, do it. Uh, if there's any, if you're listening, please, for God's sake, don't fall in the hole. Yeah, I don't care if it's a ball pit. Don't. <laughs> if there's balls in that hole, like that, it doesn't matter. But you also get, you know, you look at uh, there. Brizongo is the Mr. The, Bean. You can't 
say that. <laughs> Brizongo is the perfect example of moving a talent from SmackDown to Raw because, oh, you got a nice shiny toy. Let's move it to the big show and have a good time. And then they have no idea what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So you're here for fun? What? Yeah. Um, Why don't you go... Um, you go sit under the ring, and if we need you, we'll call. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know kind of thing. Good Brothers, what are you doing here? You're on SmackDown. Yeah, well, you know. And I think 2019 is definitely my, my New Year's resolution here on the One Fall Show is to no longer go, man, I can't wait till so-and-so goes here. Like, yeah, it, no. like it matters that the work they're doing currently is not. You know what? I love Rosemary and Impact Wrestling. And, yeah, I would like to see Rosemary in a, in a WWE product. But you know what? I don't have faith that she could continue to be the Rosemary she is in Impact Wrestling. So, you know what? I'm just going to watch uh, when Rosemary's on Impact. Yeah, I'm going rogue, man. Like, wherever Kenny Omega goes, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to figure out how, how to watch it. Um, yeah. Wherever uh, Marty Skrull's at, um, you know, he will end up at AEW. There's been some people that have questioned that. But it's just simply a matter. In my, I, I'm nearly certain that it's just simply a matter of the Bucks signed at their contract at a certain time. Their and he has contract expired. He's got six months to go or whatever. And he's right. just honoring his contract. To me, that's the biggest question mark with AEW is uh, the TV deal. Like, we, we've heard there's going to be a TV deal, but what time is it going to be on? What channels are going to be on? How often is it going to be on? And can they... Will they have a deep enough talent pool to consistently make? Because, yeah, it's interesting that it's all elite wrestling, so you know you've got the elite in there and stuff like that, but they kind of have some kind of foils to play off of. Yeah, do you do house shows around a TV show like WWE does, or do you do something like... Like NXT, seasons? where you just... Yeah, oh, or do yeah. you do like NXT, where you just... Ooh, that would be not good, man. Film a whole bunch of stuff in one place you can't, with the same crowd. They are, they are so knowledgeable about, you know, th- th- that being the elite show has been so key to their rise, and that's understanding you get in front of the people directly. Right. As easily as you can. Oh, Lord! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! My God, he killed him! Nearly My killed God! Him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bean. So, where can people find you? Uh, <laughs> You can find us over on the One Fall Show uh, Facebook page. You can find me on the Nerd Radio podcast, which you can get uh, wherever you get your podcast. And you can also get this podcast wherever you get your podcast, which is uh, iTunes. And uh, Are we on Stitcher? No, not yet. Okay. Well, you can find us on iTunes, and you can find us on the uh, on the Podbean uh, app, which yeah, is Podbean. fantastic, um, yeah. uh, which is also fantastic for listening to your other podcast. Yeah, I've got a horror show called Talk Horror to Me that I do with my buddy Matt Coltono twice a week. That's a lot of fun. Yep. And um, you do nerd radio. Eh? Did you say that already? I and did. I just completely ignored it. Yep. Talking no, about comics and video be. games and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Listen to nerd radio, everybody. <laughs> listen to Talk Horror to Me. It's fant- fantastic, fun times. You find out all about Snake. And uh, the, the Mr. Stabby universe, which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting I keep getting notes from the opposite end of the spectrum that's yeah. telling me that my bits are not working and that they need to stop. <laughs> you know, it's not going to stop <laughs> my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a perfect place to uh, end this week's show. You know what's going to stop? Or what's not going to stop? Sean's bits. <laughs> Have fun, everybody. Be safe. Don't fall in the ball pit. And this is the one snake show. <laughs> no, not the snake. Not, not the snake. <laughs> They'll go in there somewhere. <laughs> the snake. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he could, uh, his skin could split and he could explode out while you're standing there, and there's nothing he could do to stop it, and there's nothing you could do to stop it, and it would right. ruin your life. Right. Okay, George, I'm bent over. <laughs> it's like the weird cartoon. I only saw a couple of them. I don't know how many they made, but yeah. Have you ever seen George I, and Junior, yes. the big bear and the little bear? Yeah. It's like he always threatens them by saying, Bend over, Junior! And it's like, whoa, whoa, easy, George. Hey, I don't know what the... Hey, <laughs> now. <laughs> the Iron George. <laughs> Bend over, Junior. <laughs> I'll humble you the old country way. <laughs> okay, George, I'm bent over. <laughs> oh, Lord. We can do that for an hour. Not for 40 minutes. 35. We can do that for Just 35 Archer minutes Parker. a week. <laughs> Just whatever it is. Like, if we can get 35 minutes edited together, that would be a fun show. It's the wrestling show that's not about wrestling. It's that's not about wrestling at all. It's the Seinfeld of wrestling <laughs> oh, podcasts. No.
Seinfeld. I've been watching comedians and cars getting coffee. Oh, sure. He is a very uniquely, like, vaguely sociopathic man. I'm not a Seinfeldsman, but I am right. a fan of many of his guests. And yeah. I like the consistency of a single host. And But learning, I've really learned Seinfeld from his hosting. That's the same with, uh, I look at Seinfeld like I look at Rogan. I like him as a host because he's talking to people I'm interested in hearing and he doesn't completely fuck it up. Yeah. Not a huge fan of the comedy, uh, but he's, <laughs> he's a student of comedy for sure. But he's also just like this benevolent sociopath. He gives no fucks. But he's just nice to the people around him because that just makes his life easier. And he talks, yeah. he straight up says it. He's just like, oh yeah, I got a real edge to me, but yeah, I'm generally nice. But why bother? But that's only because it gets me where I want to go. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that's not a bad way to go through life. It seems bad, but he's also driving a Porsche, and I'm oh, not. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that part yeah. of it, too. I mean, really, I'd prefer to hang out with the guests to just drinking the coffee in the diner. But the problem is, I don't think I'm getting any of those guests to come out if I'm not driving the fancy car. No, probably not. Which is a sad state of You affairs, do have a nice car. Yeah, but it's not like that kind of nice. Right. It's, it's, it's a cafe, motherfucker. <laughs> it's got a small engine. It just looks pretty. <laughs> I, <laughs> the way I made the first two acts of that, because it's a slow burn. I like slow burns. So I'm not actually criticizing the movie, but sure. I was very high when I watched it. Yeah. And so what I did was the entire time I was watching leading up to the big finale, I just imagined that Minoru Suzuki was like lurking in the next room and he could come in at any moment and just start <laughs> whooping ass. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to go through life, honestly. Yeah. With the uh, with the fear that Minoru Suzuki could be in the next room, <laughs> at any moment could come in. No, I didn't mean the next room in my house. That would have been no the, the next room scary. in the movie. Like, you know, I gotta finish this movie before Suzuki comes <laughs> in and Suzuki beats me up. Beats up. <laughs> right? No, but even watching a movie, being like, no, don't beat me up, Suzuki. <laughs> oh, 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 I love you. <laughs> I'm so honored. Thank you very much for this honor. You slapped me so hard, five of my teeth fell out, but thank you. <laughs>